So coming up next, we are very honored to have Mr. Jonathan Anastas, CMO, one championship and one eSports to share on the topic of winning monetization strategies for eSports in the new normal. The pandemic and the growth of millennials in digital entertainment are disrupting the media and platform business worldwide, where fast movers capitalize huge market potential and unlock monetization opportunities by pairing gaming, music, and action sports fans with the right platforms, content partners, and leverage cultural impact and creative access. From running and broadcasting live combat sports tournaments to launching new eSports series, Jonathan will share the winning strategies in capturing the goals of the expanding value chain in the new normal. So now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome Jonathan. Thank you so much. I'm Jonathan Anastas. I'm Chief Marketing Officer of One Championship and One eSports. And I'm here today to talk to you about monetizing esports inside of the world we live in today. So obviously, esports broadly and gaming even more broadly have witnessed a huge surge in engagement due to the pandemic. You know, valuations of video game publishers and esports companies are at a high. Everybody from Forbes to The Guardian to Straits Times to Sports Business is talking about how much esports is growing. So the opportunity for monetization in gaming and esports has never been bigger than right now inside this new normal. The growth of esports is global, um, but even the most so in Southeast Asia. So if you think about the audience of 500 million esports fans globally, there's been like a 16% CAGR in the last three years. If you look at the US, an audience of 60 million, it's been like almost an 8% CAGR. Looking at Southeast Asia, it's been over a 25% compound annual growth rate. So huge global growth, largest in Southeast Asia. So if you look at percent of users who recently watched an esports tournament by country, you see that you know up to 40% of internet users in China to 12 or 15% of internet users in Malaysia or Singapore, it's really, really grown incredibly. And that Southeast Asian growth, as you see on the left-hand side of the screen, is far bigger than the G8, which has averaged an 8% growth. So again, size of the opportunity, amazing. Now, monetization is coming in this world because it's a very attractive demographic. They're young, 85% Gen Z and millennials, they're high income, they're full-time employees, they're digital natives. They're spending six or more hours a week on social networks. They're spending six or more hours a week watching online video versus 47% you know, of the population, so they massively over-index. And they have huge propensity to buy. They're more likely to spend on computer hardware and a number, number of other categories. Uh, looking at some specific categories for monetization opportunity. Now, this is looking at at our esports fans, but it's likely projectable to esports as a whole. They're almost two times as likely to use a food delivery service. So there's a massive monetization opportunity. They're definitely more than two times likely to use e-commerce, and they're more than two times likely to use e-wallet. So they're a very, very big e-commerce customer base. If you look at some categories where you could drive monetization, there are huge over-indexers in automotive. There are huge over-indexers in computers and hardware. There are, as you might imagine, 30% over-indexers in gaming peripherals, 20% over-indexers in telco users, 20% over-indexers in audio, financial products. So there, there are some low-hanging fruit, some categories for e-commerce that, that have massive opportunity in the esports audience. Um, so not surprisingly, brands are coming into the world of esports to engage with the community. There's been over a thousand deals done in the last year. We had a full year for in 2019. That's up massively versus like 2014. And the deals have been as large as $100 million. And it's everything from luxury brands like Mercedes and Louis Vuitton to mass e-commerce brands like Amazon, um, Pizza Hut, 
mid-tier luxury watches like Tag Heuer. And brands are coming here first and foremost around sponsorship and advertising within these communities. That's the largest share. It's increasingly going to use move to ticketing and media rights. And there's going to be commerce wrapped around all this. So again, if you, you think about the integration of e-commerce in all these parts of the ecosystem, it's going to be a massive, massive opportunity. We at One Esports look at three core cohorts to monetize. Right There's what we call the mainstream casual fan. It's a social activity to them as opposed to a hardcore activity. It's a hobby they enjoy with their friends. And we deliver to them things like casual game coverage, beginner's guides, event primers. And if you think about mass goods, you could sell against this audience. The second cohort is hardcore fanatics. Esports is their number one passport, pastime. They regularly attend esports events and they spend the bulk of their disposable income on gaming and esports. For this audience, we deliver in-depth coverage, player backstories. We have a merchandise store. Here's where endemics become the largest category, right? If you're selling headsets, if you're selling, you know, controllers, if you're selling consoles. So, and and then, you know, there's the competitor, right? There, there's the high competition person. And we deliver data and, and analytics here, counter strategies to popular play. And here's where you could sell the highest end peripherals, right? The most serious headsets, the most serious controllers, the highest end gaming consoles, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of a broad overview. How we at One Esports deliver against these audiences and monetize are sort of in two prime buckets. We drive a world-class esports competitions. We had 88 million total views for a debut Dota 2 event, so their scale, uh, almost a half a million peak concurrent viewers. And 96% of those people were likely to attend our next One Esports event. There's also One Esports.gg, which delivers, uh, it's a top five global esports property with almost 14 million page views, over 3 million monthly users, over 1,300 pieces of content. So this is how we are monetizing against this ecosystem. Um, one Esports was born out of one championship. Asia is the largest sports media property in history. There's a 70% crossover between one championship and one esports in terms of interest. 70% of one championship fans are interested in esports. And you can see the relative scale and how we're moving consumers back and forth. And that's an opportunity for brands to monetize, whether it's e commerce or sponsorship, across both properties. Um, if you're thinking about solving big problems in esports, these are the three big problems in esports that we at One Esports address. But I think it's it's good underpinning strategy for any way to attract these audiences. Today, problem number one: there is no Michael Jordan of esports, right? So we at One Esports are unleashing superheroes to ignite the world with hope, strength, dreams, and inspiration. Those superheroes can sell the kind of things that regular sports heroes sell, right? They can sell sneakers, they can sell beverages, right? They can sell, you know, clothing. Problem number two is that brands traditionally have been focused on viewers, but not the players, right? So the hardcore ecosystem sort of has been somewhat resistant in many cases to the entree of brands to this world. So if you're a brand listening to this, engage the entire competitive pyramid from the player on down. The player and the hardcore fanatic needs to believe that you are here to support them and they open the door to the fan base with their buy-in to your monetization. Um, the third piece of it, if you know we're here talking about commerce, is it's not efficient for a brand or a marketer to invest only in events, right? You're gonna find your greatest monetization by creating an always-on offering. You're in the events, you're in the virtual events, you're in the coverage of the events, you're in the content created around the events, you could be sponsoring people on stage, you could be you know, providing anything that they use on stage and that ecosystem is gonna lead to the highest monetization. Um, just sort of to close here, I know this was a, a brief uh, presentation today, but if you think about the three things again that we think is most important, if I can share anything about monetization that we believe in at One Esports, but we believe will help anybody in this category monetize, is celebrate the heroes, drive their values, 
engage the entire ecosystem as I spoke about and think about esports not as an event today or a tournament tomorrow, but as an always on ecosystem. You know, people streaming on, you know, the platforms every day, 24 hours a day and be part of it all the time. And if you follow those pillars, you will find and unlock the greatest monetization. Thank you very much for the time today. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, for the wonderful sharing. Now we will have a short break and please tune in again at 3.30 p.m. So you won't be missing out on our two show matches of Monopoly Plus and Hearthstone. After the break, we'll also break out into two additional parallel tracks. The tech track will open at 3.30 p.m. and the Ventura track will open slightly earlier at 3.20 p.m. Once again, we are very grateful for your participation and the support from our partners, including Adidas as our rewards partner and Universal Production Music as our music partner, as well as our supporting organizations towards Delft this year. Delft is all about insights, excitement, and fun. Check out our new Delft rewards to win fabulous prizes after completing missions on the virtual platform. And now let's take a look at the highlights from the qualifiers held earlier from Chongdong's first virtual music scene contest, Hidden Voice. See you all again at 3.30 p.m.